What's up Shorts Force? Welcome back to the channel. So I searched and scoured the interwebs for a review on this watch and found nothing. Zip, zilch, zero. So I figured, you know what? Let me go ahead and get this watch, bring it onto the channel so I can check it out for myself and share all of my results with you. Now in this episode, we'll get into the full unboxing and review of this watch here, the Yod Barista Caldi Edition Coffee Watch. Say that 10 times fast, I dare you. <laughs> and I'll share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now you make sure you stick around to the end because I think you may be surprised with my end results and my final decision about this watch. Now in case if you're new to the channel, my name's Dave, may the Schwartz be with you. And hey, did you know, it's a great day to wear a watch. Today I have on the Lucian Picard. This is an homage of the Omega 1894. You can pick these up fairly inexpensive. I've done my full review on this. You can check it out up here. I highly recommend it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I had never heard of this brand before, Yod. It's actually, so when I first, at first I thought it was pronounced Jord, but it's actually Yod. And they mainly produce wooden watches, which really aren't my thing. You know, I've never really had an interest in their look or the design of wooden watches, but I do get why some guys and gals like it. So, you know, I'm not hating. Um, in fact, I would argue there's clearly a market for those kinds of watches. I just don't personally gravitate towards them. So then on, I think it was Instagram, I actually saw the this watch by this brand. It's called the Caldus Edition Coffee Watch. So it's a limited run with a pretty unique and cool design to it. And I gotta say at first, this struck me as kind of gimmicky, but when I looked into how the dial is created, it really got me interested in more. And this particular box set comes with not only the watch, but it also has a collector's coffee tin, which we'll see here, I'm just gonna kind of unbox it. This is the collector's coffee tin that it comes in. So there's also this 14 ounce stainless steel insulated thermos. Oh, 12 ounce, I'm sorry, I said, yeah, 12 ounces. Um, and it's actually kind of cool. Has these little slots, and it's really hard to see there. Uh, let me open this up for you. So it has these slots that allow the liquid to go through it, as you can see there. And yeah, just a simple basic stainless steel insulated coffee mug. So I thought that was kind of nice. I like the branding there from Caldi's Coffee. And then you also have the Yod uh, branding down, down the bottom. So just kind of cool, nice little addition. And then there's also this bag of Caldi's Coffee. This is espresso, 700 blend um, espresso beans. And these are whole beans. Of course, you'd you know ground them up and make some espresso out of it. So I'm kind of anxious to give this a try. <laughs> There's this card as well, so it just kind of talks about the roasting inspired dial, which we'll get into that here in just a little bit, and then talks about the coffee process as far as how they made the dial with this wrist resin infused uh, technology kind of thing. So we'll get into that a bit later too, but let's go ahead and take a look at the watch. It's just here, a simple pillow that it has in this case. I gotta say, just real quick, uh, before we get into the watch, it's boxed and packaged nicely. The total with the holiday sales savings came out to $144, which is less for all of these extras than just the watch itself, which is priced at $174. So I think it's kind of like a package deal. You can get all of this included for a little bit less than just the watch, which is a nice touch. And full disclosure, I paid for this watch box set in full on my own. I did try to reach out to the brand to see if they'd be willing to send one into the channel. But honestly, by the time they got back to me through Instagram, I had already ordered this. Um, I did wanna also mention that their brand does have an affiliate program that I would have to basically apply for, which I really had no desire to do. You know, This was really the only watch that I had an interest in, not their full lineup. We'll get into more on that a little bit later. But first, let's start with the measurements as we always do. So let me get my calipers here. Okay, so we're looking at a case diameter of 40 millimeters. We include the crown that's gonna put us right at 43 millimeters. The lug to lug height is coming in at 46 millimeters and the case thickness is right at nine millimeters, which is very nice, nice and thin and sleek. The lug width on this is a perfect size at 20 millimeters as you see here. And this particular strap is made from a material that they call super hide. I hope I'm saying that right. Basically a cork infused leather alternative. And they have some cool information on this posted to their website, which you can check out. 
but I do have to say it feels really comfortable for me just trying it on. It seems like it's pretty durable and I actually love this particular color on the strap. Um, it has an interesting texture I've never seen on other straps. You know, we see that matching uh, stitching there. I think this plays nicely with the bronze tone and the coffee bean color. So great choice. And they did not skip on the quick release spring bars. So I do appreciate that for sure. This watch features a flat mineral crystal, which I know is a bit disappointing for this price point. I think Sapphire would have definitely taken this watch to the next level. The dial is minimalistic. It has this warm white satin finish. It's almost kind of uh, pearlescent or metallic as you see there. But I think there's this cool subtle attention to detail in how there's these curved sandwich recessed lines between the Arabic numeral hour indices that show the colors that a coffee bean will transform to from an unroasted state to a fully roasted end result. Starting at this light green we see here at the top and then working its way and ending in this dark, rich chocolate brown, almost black. Now there are these simple stick markers for each minute along the chapter ring as we see. The Arabic numerals are set at each even number and are printed in a clean font. And we see branding printed at the 12 o'clock and a goat silhouette printed down below above six o'clock. Now the significance of the goat is that is actually the logo for the Caldi's coffee brand. It's a nice nod to their collaboration, I must say. There's no loom on this particular watch but we see a simple three-handed design with thin needle-shaped minute and hour hands done in black and a thin needle second hand done in that bronze color. Now the watch is powered by a Miyota Quartz GL30 movement. There's a simple push-pull crown and the Yode watches are actually rated for splash proof. So I'm guessing 30 meters of water resistance. You don't have a direct water resistance rating, but I did find that on their website, which is kind of interesting because as you see, there's a screw down case back but it only has 30 meters of water resistance. So if that is incorrect, um, I you know, would be happy to correct that if it's 50 meters of water resistance, but it seems like it's just a simple 30 meter water resistance rating for their watches. Could be different because this one isn't a wooden watch, but I'm really not sure. I do like that the crown is matching the same case material that we see here with the lugs and the case back. See branding here. Not really a whole lot of other information on the case back, but it has an interesting case shape. So it uses that RIST, the resin infused technology. So these are actual coffee beans that have been roasted in a vacuum sealed environment and then cooled down and put into this poured resin cast where they then cut it and then buff it out and polish it. Now, when you look at the video that Yod released, it shows the coffee beans on the edge look a little bit different. What ends up happening, in my opinion, is this kind of looks like, I don't know, it, it just looks like these weird squiggle design patterns, and you don't see that it's actually coffee beans unless someone told you what it was. From this angle, it looks good because it, you know, again, just looks like little coffee beans are in there. But when you look at the sides, the way that it cuts the bean in half, it gives it a weird kind of cross section design. So I don't know, maybe that's just my particular watch that I received, but I think I would have liked to have seen whole beans on the, the edge. Now that said, I think it's really cool how the lugs curve down a little bit and then you see the case integrated on top, that resin seated on the bottom portion of the case itself. I think that's really interesting. I've never seen anything like that. And I do like that we have just a simple design on the lugs, this jut down, um, and we see a nice brushed finish on that 304 anodized steel that gives it that bronze coat color. And that's the case for this tang buckle as well. We see Yod branding, and that process gives it that color, which is better in my opinion, I guess, than just doing a PVD coating. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this holds up over time, but the quality of it feels actually pretty substantial. I, you know, no complaints there. Uh, would have been cool to maybe see some branding or a little logo on the crown itself. We just see a little J there. But I think what would have been cool is if they put like the little goat logo onto that would have been, in my opinion, a little nice touch. It has these deeper striations on the coin edge, which is cool. Very easy to actuate. There's no date complication on this movement. So moving it in position one, it's nice and smooth. Really no complaints there. It's kind of basic. I think it would have been cool to see the second hand and the minute hand extend all the way out to the markers on the chapter ring, but not a deal breaker. And then I like that we get a nice little brushed bronze um, look on that Ray Hot. Gives a nice warm touch when it plays with the light there. But nothing really bad to say there either. So here we have it on my seven inch wrist and you can see sits nice and flat with that thin nine millimeter case dimension. 
This could definitely be a unisex watch in my opinion because of the case shape, 46 lug to lug. This would probably fit on a lot of female wrists without any issues as well. And then that 40 millimeter diameter is gonna fit with most wrist sizes out there without any real issue. Now to summarize, I like this watch. I think it has a very unique design and while it does say it's a limited production run, it also doesn't say on the website limited to what number. So overall, it's more cool factor but it leaves a bit to be desired, such as having that sapphire crystal would have been really nice. And I think if the recessed portion on the dial had been a little bit wider or thicker, you'd see more of that color. Now, those are some cons, but here are the pros. It has a really comfortable strap. And I think this is a really cool concept to offer an alternative to leather. I love that the case and the buckle are the 304 anodized steel to give it a bronze color as opposed to just going the PVD coated route. The case measurements are good for a unisex style that could work for you know, men or women. So would I recommend this watch? Well, that's what leads me into my conundrum. You see, it's a bit expensive for a simple three-handed quartz watch, but it's unique and it would be something that you probably aren't going to run into anyone else having on their wrist. So if you wanna stand out or have a conversation piece when talking about watches, this one will definitely give that to you. And while I like the watch, I don't love it. And I feel that Anytime I'm wearing brown tones where this watch would work well with, I feel I'm gonna reach for about four or five other watches that I really enjoy before I reach for this one. And that's a problem because I can see where this watch could end up sitting unworn in my personal collection. Now, if you don't have 40 plus watches and you owned this one, I think you would wear it a lot more. So that's something worth mentioning. Next, when I was looking at this watch, the website had a holiday sale that was gonna expire with a countdown of around 48 hours. And so I couldn't really make up my mind, but when it got to that last hour of the countdown, I felt a bit pressured and some anxiety. So I spent the $144 because I didn't wanna miss out and have to pay 174 or more later. I fast forward about a week later and I've seen these sales start and end about four or more times, each time stopping for a short period before starting back up. This has made me feel like I'd kind of been fooled into missing out on a deal and ultimately bought the watch when I wasn't really ready. Now, they do have a return policy and I'm feeling buyer's remorse at this time, so I haven't made up my mind yet, but I'm currently leading towards sending the watch back. And the combination of my fear of not wearing it often enough and paying $144 for mineral crystal and a simple, albeit reliable, quartz movement is starting to overshadow the uniqueness of this watch but I wanna hear what you guys think. So drop me a comment with your thoughts about this one. Would you keep it or would you return it if you were in my shoes? I always appreciate your feedback, so thanks for that. And of course, I have a lot more planned coming up here in the future, so if you haven't subscribed to the Schwartz Force yet, now's your chance to do it. I'd love to have you join the Schwartz Force family. Now, if you're looking for more content, check out this video right here. It's really cool, I think you'll enjoy it. And as always, I will look forward to seeing you guys at the next one. Take care, and have a Merry Christmas.